My dad was a career army man. He had been in the army 23 years before he retired, and apparently, while he was stationed in Korea, he met my mom. A pretty common story I've heard, but the result of them meeting was me, a beautiful baby. That is not really beautiful there, but my artistic skills are lacking. Shortly after I was born, my dad retired from the military to pick up a job as a layout artist for a book company of some sort. But either way, we ended up in Cincinnati, Ohio of all places. Not really sure why, because I don't think we really have any family here. Eh, either way. But when we weren't in the woods, we were playing on this magical device called the computer that my dad introduced us to at a very early age. I mean, seriously, this thing blew my mind at the time because I could not imagine ever living without it. I mean, he told me stories about how computers were ancient and filled up entire rooms, but I was just flabbergasted that I could do what it did. I didn't even know about the internet back then. Sadly, it wasn't all happy times back then. My dad and my mom fought a lot, and by fought a lot, I mean my mom fought a lot, and my dad had to reciprocate. Um, she wasn't happy where she was, and, well, we didn't understand why, but me and my brother just tried to distract ourselves with video games, you know, try to ignore it what we can, but eventually that stopped working. It was pretty inevitable, but the divorce finally came. I mean, we were pretty sad, but we were more sad to see our dad just kind of cave in. I mean, we were out of money, half of the income was gone, so uh, we had to lose the house. We didn't, couldn't buy as many games as we had before, so we lost out on a lot of gaming, but at least we got to keep the computer, and that's what really sparked my love of computers and technology. Eventually, after dating around for a long time, my dad found someone that we could all agree on. She was pretty much the nicest person that we ever met, and her name was Dee. I mean, I agreed with her because she bought us a PlayStation 2, and I was pretty excited at the time. But also, she did something that we couldn't do at that time, and she made my dad happy. And that was pretty much the most important thing that anyone could do. Uh, my father bought, brought me some bad news. Uh, he, he put a piece of paper in front of me, and uh, just let me read it without saying anything. And I, I was a pretty smart kid, so I understood every word that it said, all the techno mumbo jumbo. But the main thing is that um, in basically big bold letters, it said cancer and the really bad kind of cancer. So uh, that was a really tough time for me because I, I, I kind of lost sight of what I was doing. Everything seemed kind of clear to me before, but right now everything was kind of just getting away from me. I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do, which was make video games. I wanted to do it. My dad didn't agree with me, but I thought that that was what I was going to do. However, I started to realize that games might not work, so I kind of put that off the table and focused on going to engineering. I was originally in civil engineering, but moved into biomedical engineering because they had a medical school program. But that didn't work out either. I, I didn't want to do that. So I flip-flopped back to engineering again. And then I thought, hey, if I'm going to do what I want to do, I got to do games. And I really couldn't decide what I was going to do with my life. I was kind of at a crossroads and just frustrated. Then one year later, we were all home for summer. And my dad was getting pretty bad with cancer. And he, he wasn't himself anymore. But one morning... We were all woken up by my stepmom, Dee, screaming. And we went downstairs to see that my dad was dying. And the last words that he said to me were, I love you so much. And I held my dad's hand as he died. After my dad died, I became more confused than I was before because I was so far into engineering that I didn't think that I could get out anymore. And oh man, and I just had to watch this on Father's Day. Uh, I didn't even know that it was Father's Day until people started telling me on Twitter and... Oh man, if you didn't know, my dad is the greatest guy I've ever met in my life and I'm, I'm only me. And I, I know that I only have the values that I have because he instilled them in me. And I'd like to think that I'm passing on those values to you guys. 
in some small way or another, and I don't, I don't mean to keep harping on, on sad stuff, I don't want to. I, I want this to be happy, and I want this to be, you know, good for everybody to enjoy. So I'm probably just gonna wrap this up because I've been recording for a long time now. Time to get real. Speaking of dads. I, this is this is like there's no way to make this funny guys. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's absolutely no way. There's there's nothing funny about this. Um except this picture is funny. <laughs> like this is Christ, <laughs> this is father. This is probably the the most emotionally painful thing in my life. This is this was painful because like it fucked me up for such a long time because I didn't address it. Mm -hmm. I never emotionally addressed it. I lashed out at the people around me because of it and I kind of secluded myself away and wouldn't like come to terms with it. Like my dad died and then for a week after I felt fine. It's such a big thing that you you can't physically process it. So you just have to let it sit or at least that was my like mentality but I didn't even realize it was happening at the time. I would go to, I went to work like a week after. I was literally standing there looking at the pile of wood. I was at a mm -hmm. carpenter at the time. I had no idea how long I was there. I looked at my, my, my clock and I was like, I'd been staring at it for an hour. And my boss, thankfully, was just like letting me go mm -hmm. because he's like, he knows I just lost my dad. And then I go over to him and I'm just like, look, I'm not doing any work. Uh, you shouldn't pay me if I'm not gonna do anything. So I'm just gonna go home. And he's like, yeah, man, dude, go. Yeah. I don't even know why you were here today. Yeah. <laughs> for like a year afterwards, I was still just this angry, insular guy. And it wasn't till I dealt with it and actually addressed the problem that I was able to uh, come out of that. But that's easily the worst pain, not like the most condensed worst emotional pain, but because of how long mm -hmm. it took. Randomly, we'll get these like, oh, I'm thinking of this person and suddenly I'm crying, I, okay, weird. I'm past that point with my dad. I don't get that, uh, I haven't had that for a long time. Right now, if I if I think about my dad, like I only think of like the good times I had. And there's only like a, a little bit of nostalgia that I'm like, ah, I wish you could have seen me as a YouTuber. Yeah. But then again, considering all the Unisana's videos we made, maybe it's best <laughs> that he's not, so that's fine. And, and what's funny is like, I don't, I don't look back at that type of memory and I don't feel the same way as I do about marching band. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> this one sticks out so much more like to that. Like yeah. for, for loss, it's like once you address it, maybe I haven't addressed my marching uh, maybe band. You, maybe you gotta address that, dude. In over 20 years, that's not by choice. This food was discontinued about 20 years ago, much to my dad's dismay. I'm talking about Mohawk Valley brand Limburger cheese spread. For some reason unknown to me or my dad in the past, Kraft decided that this item was not popular. My dad ate this probably because he was German and it's kind of a German thing, you know? Weird food. Cheese spread. I am kind of that type of person. And my dad's go-to snack was Triscuits and Limburger cheese spread. I love this. My dad got mad at me because I ate all of it. The jars were only ever like this big and sometimes there was a big one and this, this was it. That big around that big. That's it. A very strange memory to come back to it because it has nothing to do with Limburger cheese. My dad used to make uh, old style musket rifle, muzzle loaders that you had to do it. They're handcrafted out of wood and my dad used to make them and, and he used to uh, make powder horns, which are literally just bull's horns that you shave down for gunpowder and you put in the muzzle and that's it. I used to, uh, to try to participate in it, I used to sit in the garage and I used to just whittle down the horn. It was horrible, it was horrible, horrible, but I did it because, you know, I wanted to be involved. So I would just sit for hours with a nail, a big old file, like a huge one, like a foot long, and just <laughs> like on this horn. And it was never enough. <laughs> I'd be like, Dad, I don't want to do it no more. I don't know why I'm thinking of that now. Like, collection of memories that are popping up. I remember this one time my dad was pissed off. I don't know why this is coming up, but my dad was pissed off because the alarm was going off, the fire alarm was going off, and he, he was really frustrated about something, so he just, Fucking jumped up and swatted it off the ceiling. I think that's the thing, is just like this this is such a my dad thing. And for the longest time my dad was pissed off because they didn't make it anymore for some reason. He scoured the internet for it. My dad was always very tech savvy, so he was on the internet long before I was. He introduced me to computers and so he he would scour the internet. I bet on some obscure cheese forum that's still in existence to this day. <laughs> it's 
is a post made by my dad <laughs> angrily ranting about how they don't make Limburger spread anymore. That's incredible. Do you still like it? I love it. I remember my dad told me I couldn't ride my bike through the backyard. Because it tore up the lawn. So, <laughs> what did I do? I fucking rode my bike one lap around the backyard and I was looking in the windows like, yeah, can you see me? No, I can't see me. And then I, I rode through real quick. And then I came around for the second lap and I'm like, <sighs> and then I look in the window and he's just standing in the glass doorway, just staring at me and I'm like, <laughs> I just remember biking very slowly around the house. That's so weird. Ah, oh, God. I don't know why. To describe how I'm feeling right now, I'm very nostalgic about my dad right now. Like, I don't think about my dad on a daily basis, but, you know, he was probably, you know, the best dad that I could have hoped for. Now, for those of you who don't know, some of you may not, my dad passed away when I was 18. And, uh... He was just a really good dad. That's all he ever wanted to be was a dad. And he had me and my brother when he was very old in life. He had my brother when he was 46, 47. I bet if he tried this, he would say it's not the same. <laughs> he would demand Kraft bring back Mohawk Valley brand Limburger spread. But this is good. This is really good. I like it a lot. The radiation. <laughs> anyway, so this was my dad's favorite snack. Fig Newtons. If you want to know confirmation that my dad was at one point an old man, he loved <laughs> some Fig Newtons. So this is just like, this is the coup de grace because my, my dad's two favorite snacks of all time was Limburger spread and then Triscuits and Fig Newtons. So I'm just gonna have this complete off the memory. No, I had, I had a great childhood and this largely in part to my dad. Cause he was just such a good dad. I haven't gotten any at all. Hey bud. Punch. Oh, wait, is it here? Guys, I have something to tell you. The developers of this game, they gave me a little bit of a, a surprise. I, I, I know what it is. I think it's here, but I haven't seen it in person yet. It's one of these books has an Easter egg there. How to comb your mustache, Clifton M. Fishbach. That's my dad's name. And my dad had a killer mustache. Here's a picture of my dad with a mustache. Um, they put this in because I said to them how important this game was to me. This was one of the original games that I ever played. And it always has a special place in my heart. And so they said they were going to do something special. And uh, now it's going to be in the game forever. And it's the biggest book here too. <laughs> That's really nice. That's, that's really nice. That is really sweet. And, you know, it, it's such a small, it may seem like such a small thing, but my dad's name is like in this game forever now. And anyone can see it and anyone can find it and anyone can learn how to comb your mustache. That was really cool. So thank you to the developers of the game and the people that put this in here. Just thank you. I'm loving the game so far. I can't wait to, f I just, oh, okay, all right, I'm gonna get out of here. I, I wanna keep playing the game. I could spend a while in here just looking at stuff. Holy crap, look at that. But just, just like, just understand, that means a lot. It really does. And I really appreciate it. So, thank you very much.